I have a question. What would happen if I just kept shrinking? Well, you keep going, you'll eventually become a personal nuclear reactor. It can start splitting atoms by hand. Getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the real problem is conservation of mass and energy. So you can't shrink while keeping your same atomic structure. I mean, because your atoms are the scale. Shrinking below that means you're rewriting quantum mechanics. So we're going to break some physics here. By the time you're smaller than an ant, you can safely jump off a chair. Air resistance helps you glide down. But yeah, your surface area to mass ratio is going to skyrocket. You'd be like a feather, and terminal velocity will drop to a few centimeters per second. News, your voice is so high now because your vocal cords are so much shorter that no human can hear you anymore. Yeah, and your lungs would also be smaller, so you'd squeak into silence. You'd hear new things. Normal sounds would be too low frequency for your teeny ears, but high-pitched things might suddenly be audible. Sort of, but your whole ear structure will be too small to transmit those frequencies at all your brain. Then insects would be monsters. And watch out for water. If you get caught in a droplet, the surface tension would be too high for you to get out. Surface tension does dominate at micro scales. This is a serious drowning hazard. Smaller. The air keeps getting thicker. You start to feel like you're wading through a ball pit. Cells are... Yeah, the mean free path of air molecules is comparable to your body size at this scale. Huge next to you. And your vision's getting blurry because the wavelengths of light are too big for your teeny little eyes. Yes, yeah, so human eyes are radiation detectors that are calibrated specifically for 400 to 700 nanometers of visible light. You're going to need electron vision at this point. Still going smaller. Now nanometers. you feel like you're being bombarded with air molecules <laughs> moving around at a thousand miles an hour. It's like... All right, so we're in the... The Brownian motion regime. Same reason why pollen grains jiggle under a microscope. Inside a pinball machine. Now subatomic. Okay. If you magically survive all of this and go- Magic is going to be doing the lion's share of the work at this point. How your atoms are maintaining structure breaks physics. Even smaller. Now you're in a bizarro world. Uh -huh. So you go inside an atom and you find there's surprisingly a lot of space. Not going to try to break it with a really small pickaxe. Here. Now going quantum. You don't even really have a place. Yeah, things are mostly empty space. Anymore. You're somehow also a wave. At this scale, you might be able to go through walls. And if you Quantum tunneling, so it's more of a random chance that your wave function appears on the other side, which is great for electrons, not so much for humans. Somehow kept all of the same mass as you shrunk okay. to this size. You're now one ten billionth the diameter of a proton. Here comes the black hole. We're about to cross the point of no return and whoops. I like this. Black holes this small don't exist, but humans this small don't exist either. Okay, I like that she acknowledged that this was mostly magic.